Folks, we're back. It is season two, episode four, and I'm going to say it quick, Kurt Saunders. Thank you. All right. And I, I always screw you up with the officer, and I, and I apologize. No problem. Um, I still will never get it right again. Takes a lot more than that to it offend does. Kurt. It, yeah. Yes. Oh, it, yeah. It, yeah. This guy? Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's got thick skin. He got a haircut, though. Yeah. He, he's yes, getting there. He's getting... Yes, I did. You might want to check where he got it done. I, I could. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't look like it was anywhere good, but yeah, he got a haircut. <laughs> All right, so we're here with this young man. His family has been in the boating business since? 1843. There you go. So you guys designed their first boat? I don't think so. No. Um, from what I'm told, I'm the fifth generation Saunders to run the family business. Wow. It started there on Congamon Road. There was a hotel across the street, the Lake House Hotel, and then they... Across the street, they developed, they had six wooden rowboats tied to a tree, and that's how they started. Really? Because back then, people, with the railroad where the bike trail is, that was a depot down there, a stop, and that's what they yeah. would do. So it grew to that. It was a tourist attraction. Yes. Yes. Oldest continuous family yes. business in the town of yep. Southwick, Absolutely. unless somebody steps forward and right. says, you know, we were Likewise. Uh, uh, here before 1843. Yeah. But I think it was them and the Arnolds. And the um, Arnolds is a farm, but yeah, they said yeah. it's the same. Um, but what, what a remarkable record. That's good. It's a nice business. It's definitely changed. Um, my dad got it from his two uncles, from a grandfather, from a grandfather before that. Wow. And, so, and they've been around town a long time. I had it in my hand, but I forgot to bring it with me today. License number, I think it's number one. You had mentioned that, yeah. South Inn that one of our ancestors had that. It's a handwritten license on the select board letterhead. Wow. So so that's pretty good if you got the first liquor license in the town Apparently. of Southwick, yes. huh? Uh, <laughs> uh, license number one. Uh, yeah. I believe it's number one. Uh, but uh, so walk us through, uh, so they start out with a few rowboats tied up uh, uh, by the edge of the lake. Uh, and I think some of the old photos show that they sold fishing, uh, yes. fish, fishing bait and, fishing uh, stuff, and then uh, stuff and so forth. But walk us through the evolution of the business from uh, back then to, to what's there today, uh, kind of in, in steps, if you would. There are a few pictures in the Southwick, all about Southwick book that'll show you the original marina there. And I think it was added on to a couple times. And then there was some sort of a porch, screen porch, something like that, where you could eat there and stuff like that. Um, then the, it was, that building was destroyed in 55 from the flood. Oh. Somewhere in my plethora of stuff I have pictures, but we'll get back to that. But And then uh, right after that, my they took an old chicken coop and put it up near the road. And my father was a selectman who granted my license, my uncle a license for the package store. So that was a package store down there. And I believe one of the other ones was uh, Clayton Siegel's, one of his relations, Aldo Siegel, Aldo. I think was one of those yeah. selectmen then. And that started a big hoorah back then. But, and, they, and that, that got the package store started adjacent to the marina. And then in 56, he built the building that's there today still. There's probably a picture of it here somewhere. We'll, we'll come and do okay, the we'll pictures do in that. a few minutes. Yeah. Sure. Um, he built the package store. And then um, it took a little bit of time bef through then. And then in 58, they built the marina that's there today. Now, that was a church from Wilbraham Academy that... Uh, when the guy was commissioned to build the church, part of the deal was you have to demolish the old church. Well, once they got going and found out it was a modular building built by the Thayer Corporation, New Hampshire, they took it apart, piled it up in his yard, and Red Patterson was an old name in this town. He was a buddy of my dad's and said, hey, I know a guy that's got this building. <laughs> my father went and bought the building for three grand, brought it over, Lenny Flores made the foundation and erected it. And from what I'm told, uh, it was supposed to be lower with just a crawl space underneath and then the marina would be upstairs and as they got building it people got different ideas about well you know if you made this a little bit higher it wouldn't encroach on the view and you could like park stuff under here in the winter 
Well, now the marina is actually downstairs, yeah. and upstairs there is a we he made an old town boat showroom out of it. In '65, they made a snack bar restaurant out of it. My mother ran that for some time until '86, and then we then we rented it out, and then we finally just was done with that, and then we, now we have pontoon boats up there. So, so the uh, basic marina business starts in uh, uh, 1843, uh, and what was the the next step from that? I, uh, when when did they start start selling motorized boats? Dad, my father transformed it in the 50s. Okay, into uh, <coughs> starting selling stuff, outboard motors and things. There's a couple pictures. I believe there's one in one of your Southwick books about some display they set up in the Powder Mill School that had Buccaneer motors and things like that. Oh, so wow. that's from the 50s. Scott Atwaters and things like that. Definitely different, but um, he worked for a big uh, Ralph D. Jones, I believe it was a Volkswagen Chrysler distributor in Springfield. Yep. And when he went in and explained to Mr. Jones that he had to leave because the family was giving him the family business, he said, We'll double your salary if you'll stay. He said, well, what do you mean? He said, well, you're the first guy here in a snowstorm and you live the farthest away, <laughs> things like that. And you know, you're just, a, you're just a body guy's dream. You could take some certain sh Chrysler product and he could take the whole front end of the car, list the part numbers, the list and the net out of his head without ever looking up a part. They said he was a dream, people told me, so. <laughs> So he transformed it into selling motors and things like that. And then he got signed up with Johnson Outboards in 1960. Um, they sold old town boats. And then he sold, he started selling correct craft ski boats. Um, apparently, I don't remember exactly what year it is. It had to be in the later 60s. Um, him and another dealer in Eastern Massachusetts sold more boats than everybody in the country combined. He said he sold nine boats in the month of September one year. Wow. Just very <laughs> out of character, just strange stuff. But So he was doing that. Um, I started working there, grew up there, grew into it. I'm one of four brothers. Each one's had different interests, things like that. So, But I stuck there, hung out with my dad. And uh, then we sold some aluminum boats, things like that in the 80s. And then in 88, he helped me get set up with Crest Pontoon Boats right before he got cancer. And uh, that's where we are today. Okay, very good. And uh, just the, the commercial here, you're a full service yes. uh, uh, you know, dealer. You do everything from uh, sell the, or rent the slips to- yes. um, we sell uh, new product, use product. Sell new product, use product, uh, take boats in and out for the winter. Yes. Uh, fix them when they cough. Yep. Uh, okay, and 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 when you're all done, you can uh, go next door and buy a six pack. Uh, yeah, there you and go. go home. <coughs> yes, you can. Uh, yeah, that sweet, worked out well. Sweet, yeah, sweet little business. You mentioned the uh, lake house uh, yes. early on, but that was not your family. It just your no. family took advantage of the situation Apparently that they you had the all street. the visitors yes. across the street. Yes. Uh, uh, when was the lake house, uh, did it burn or did it get demolished or? That I don't remember. Okay. Okay. I knew it one time, your I'm time. sure, but it, it was before way before your time, me. But, no. yeah. um, but uh, uh, very good, your mom ran the uh, snack shop over yep. there. For my me. uncle ran the package store up until the 80s. He sold it to my dad. And then my dad ran, didn't really run it, but had a manager over there so it would become all one complex and try yeah. to split it up. That seemed to work out better and then we, he had one boat yard across the street, and then we've added more to that real estate we bought from Biardi's that had the town beach years ago. My dad and mom and Charlie and Alice were great friends. Um, so how old were you when you first started working there? I was nine. The first nine. motor I sold was a 73 Johnson four horsepower. So some of that stuff you just never forget. Well, so this okay. will be my 50th year there. Uh, so. Congratulations on that. That's a like long said, time to be working yes. in a family business that's been there since 1843. Yes. Yeah, uh, very good. Um, 
So what did you do when you, <coughs> what, what did uh, your dad have you doing when you first? Uh, uh, Pretty much any, you know, whatever needed to be done. And then like my father said, he used to live just up the street at the corner of Sheep Pasture Road. Okay. And he said when they were kids, there were 50, at least 50 rowboats there. I'm assuming they were all wood. And he said you would walk down the street and bail all the boats just so your uncle would let you use one and then go out there and fool around. And then some other guy, and like I said, it's there because people come in and naturally, you know, they're the seasoned, the older ones that you know, have been around a long time. You hear different stories over time that one of them, one of the uncles could stand in the back of the wooden rowboat with a seat on the seat and bail it with an oar. Mm. He could ba get the water oh. out of the boat with an oar <clears throat> and wow. uh, things like that. And then, then he transitioned into the motor things. And then I still remember we rented rowboats with uh, little seven and a halfs on them from the 50s. Then rumor has it, one hot sun, sunny afternoon, my father piled all the motors in, the, in one of his wooden rowboats, rode out in the middle of the lake and threw them over the side one by one and said, I'm done with that. That's the end of that. And then it, him and then uh, he was in very close contact with the Maasai family that ran Elmer's up on the North Pond. Yeah. Yeah. And they were great. They worked together, things like that. And uh, he said that they both rented rowboats. I guess Elmer took over from his mom. And, you know, she get a call once in a while, like, you know, hey, there's a guy up here in North Pond, you know, driving this thing through the, the old tunnel, the culvert. He's, you know, hitting bottom and stuff and, you know, smashing the stuff, things like that. But he just uh, one day just gave it up, and that was it. And so we got back into it later, but it is definitely <laughs> a challenge. <laughs> and we don't dispose of motors uh, no. like that. No, no, no. Do you want to do the pictures uh, uh, now? Oh, you can if you want. I thought you were, you were fidgeting with it, I'm Joe, so I thought him. maybe oh. this was a good time. I'm just looking for age. Yeah. Uh, when, when, where, age which before Which end of the building, or which end of the table do you want to start with? This looks old. This one? I'll hold it up if you want to look at it and tell us what that. Uh, tell us what Oh, no. Joe and I had it first. Okay. This one, how's that for reflection? Okay. I'm going to put it over here if that's all right. So you. This one's from the 70s. Um, my mother actually bought this aerial photo for a present for my dad. You can only see there's one boat out here. Here's a pile of rowboats. All the parking lot, a lot of it was dirt left over from the flood. And um, this is the package store I spoke of. Right behind it where you see my finger, this is the chicken coop that used to be out in the street. And uh, I don't have a picture of it, but my brother had to picture my aunt sitting in front of the chicken coop. Um, and this is how it's evolved from there. This is the Franklin House across the street. Some of this has been redeveloped since then. This is one of the boat yards. And then there's another picture, the other one you have here. What was really nice about this was um, my brother had that one recreated at Southwoods. They did a marvelous job recreating the picture. This is a similar picture. This is from the 80s. Um, I can tell by some of the cars there and where I was. 82 probably to be exact, because I remember this boat here when I graduated from high school. So you see a few more boats out there. There used to be a lot of moorings back in the 50s. They didn't do docks, they did more moorings. But And then you should have something from, I think this is another one from the 80s. This one got dropped and broke. But. This is probably later 80s. We had taken the sign down to redo it. And you can see more of the docks coming in as we did it. Um, and again, this is uh, the signature product that uh, he put out there, the gas, with gas pumps right on the dock. They built this in 65. I believe it was built out of um, timbers from an ice house or something like that. Um, Esso came and took pictures of this and sent it all over the world because they were so impressed with what he had built. <laughs> so, what other pictures? What's the next one? Some of these are from the 90s. This is a closer up, yeah. Here you get more of the pictures, yeah. These are from the 90s. This one's also from the 90s. You can see now, then, and uh, yeah, across the street. Instead of just having one boat yard, we had two boat yards. That's part of what we bought from the Biardis. 
all this real estate across the street came from them because apparently he started all that and that was all one piece that Charlie subdivided a long time ago once he bought it from the Smiths. And this super close up. And I think this is a more modern. No, this one's still pretty old too, but it'll give you a really good idea what it looks like. So, and uh, like I said, it's it's a lot of hard work, but it's very rewarding. And there's another aerial photograph. I believe this is 19. This is 1990 right here. So, how many hours a, a week, or how many hours a day do you work in the summertime during the main season? Well, it's it's not unheard of to work till 10, 11, 12 o'clock. So I can remember being younger. My kids were young. My wife would make, when Johnny Carson was on and David Letterman was on after him, my mother would, my wife, wife would time it so a roast would come out when David Letterman came on. So I'd go home, take a shower, and eat, which is probably not the best thing to do. I mean, they tell you not to do that now, but. Now we know better. We, now we know better. We just did it. You did it, and that was it. You worked. And yeah, it's you not, worked. Yeah, no. Uh, you know, I think the point is uh, having uh, operating a family business, especially in a very seasonal business uh, as it is, uh, uh, long hours, hard work. It's a lot of challenge, and you know, I got married in '85, and when I was first married, of course, that was some of the balance, and it took me a little while, but my wife Jude understood that. Okay, summer's this long. Whatever I can fit into that, I have to. Like you sell ice cream or yeah. anything. You whatever have you, to. whatever you can do in that period of time, that's what you get. So, yeah. and I can remember that I sold a new pontoon boat in 1989 to a guy in the lake. Judy was very pregnant for our second daughter, and I was there and I promised the boat for the weekend, and she could go into labor any minute. So I went to work home cleaned up back when it cooled off. I rigged the boat, middle of the night. Boy, I caught hell for that one. My father came back and said that, I said, yeah, I had, I had to get it done because they promised the boat for the weekend. And what if Judy goes to the hospital and I'm not here? It's gotta be done. You just do it, so. You said you're one of four? Yes, I'm one of four brothers. I'm the second to youngest. I have an oldest brother, Keith, another brother, Kevin, then me, then my younger brother, Carl. So. so they had the K thing going. Oh, yeah, they loved that. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking for the pattern show. Yeah, know, yeah, uh, yeah. You yeah. know, uh, uh, somebody had to figure it out. But what was, uh, you know, what was the neighborhood like down there when you were growing up? So you've mentioned Smith's Beach across the, pretty much across the street. What was, yep. what was going on there? When I, what I can remember of, it had gotten slower then. But there was still the beach there, and there was a bar and things like that. And that was that where our town beach That's is That's where today? the town beach is now. Okay. They well, took the original building. Well, the original building burnt one night. Right. Late 70s, early 80s, maybe. Yeah. I remember that. And then the town bought it, and they made a town beach into it. But I vaguely remember being younger. Of course, being a kid, you didn't go in the bar part. But right. I can remember walking over there, riding your bike over there, and... Um, you didn't have to go there to go to the beach, I suppose. Nope. <laughs> yeah, you had <laughs> yeah. yeah, your yeah. own. Oh yeah. <clears throat> and uh, uh, what was the the store that's I I think is now the Congaman Cafe uh, uh, as of the last month or so? But uh, who who whose store was that then? That was K Hills Market. K Hills, Market. Hills Market. It was Benini's. Yeah. They lived on the corner of Berkshire Avenue, and my dad walked down there when he was a kid, and said that. My grandmother said that he could walk down three or four times before he spent his penny or nickel or whatever he had to buy stuff, trying to decide if he really wanted it or not. And that, because don't forget, you know, my parents grew up during the Depression. So it's, and other people in town, like I talked to an account that talked about the Spillane family that owned Travel Town Trailers. And he had a reputation of being on the thriftier side. But he said that's what you had to do to sure. make it. And people just don't understand that today, that whole throw it out. What do you mean throw it out? You can't. You have to do more with that. Like I said, him growing up, the Depression made a big difference. Yeah. But yeah, Benini's was there, then it was Cahill's, and then it was Market 8, Grimaldi, yeah. 
police officer retired yeah. or went over there, ran that. Yep. So. And uh, you're probably too young to remember Miller's speech. You know where it is, heard but it. Uh, you've heard of it yes. uh, from from your folks. But oh, yeah. uh, um, that in its day must have been a uh, quite quite a deal. Yep. Yes, they used to claim years ago that um, we Saunders owned that one time, and they lost that parcel of land in a poker game. How true it is, I don't know, but I've heard a lot of stranger things happen. Yeah, because other things you go by where people just the stuff you read about and some intense so. And then, if I recall correctly, Mrs. Miller lost it in a lawsuit. Yes, uh, something to do with that. Uh, so uh, uh. they still own some of it. There is a parcel over there that they still own. Okay. The peninsula that jets out there, they still own that. Okay. So okay. nice family. So, so you grew up on uh, Sheep Pasture Road, from what you said. Is that correct? Or? That's where my father lived. We That's lived there. Then we lived on the other side of the lake, um, South Long Yard Road for a while. Okay. Up on the end of uh, the tobacco there, Hathaway and Steen okay. Tobacco. My father worked there as a kid. And then they sold some foreman's house over there on South Long Yard Road. Um, I think he said he paid 12000 for it. But he made a, when he presented his offer, he was all pre approved, had the money, letter from the bank, and that's how he got the house. We lived there for a while. Then we moved back near the lake, ended up on White Street across the lake. Okay. And, uh, so you uh, uh, went to Southwick schools yes. all the way through? Yes, so, uh, graduated from Southwick High in 1982. Okay, so uh, did you ever, uh, we'll start with the, cons uh, you went to the Woodland School, uh, one through three. Yep. Yep. Uh, did you ever go to, school here. you went to school Third here. Third and fourth grade was Third here. Third and fourth grade here. Yep. And then, then Powder Mill, and then the high school for oh, the so, last, for so nine went. through 12. So, um, any any favorite teachers, you know, two or three teachers that stand out to you? Not really. They're all nice. They're all very dedicated, very nice people, go the extra mile. Some had reputations being stricter than others. Did you need the extra mile? <laughs> no, not really. I was pretty, pretty self, you know. Yeah, pretty good. Just go with it. That's yeah. it. So, uh, any you know activities during school, or or go home and, and work and work. work work. That was your activity. That was work. Yeah, yeah. My father was a little bit older, so even I can remember eighth grade, something was wrong at the marina, so they <coughs> let me out early in the year, so I could go and work with him during the day to help him out. And uh, then I whenever, like I said, then once I was up to high school. Um, I had enough of a reputation that all I had to do was walk into the office and tell him that someone was there to pick me up and somebody that knew my dad would drive up, hey, go get Kurt, yeah, go get me, it's like if I had study halls or something at the end of the day, yep, oh yeah, sign yourself out, go ahead, Kurt, and have a nice day, and uh, things like that. I'm guessing you wouldn't get that consideration today. Probably but, not, uh, but maybe. But I don't, know. Uh, maybe don't know. I haven't tried it. Uh, yeah, but it's different. No. Uh, those things are, little, are definitely different. Uh, things are, are different that way. But yeah, you did that and it worked and it would be frustrating in the younger grades, even as slow as Powder Mill School, seventh, eighth grade, you'd get to a vacation week because then we had February vacation, April vacation. Teacher would assign a book report. <laughs> I don't have time for that. I have, to I have to work. What do you mean? I have to work. And that was it. I just, like I said, we'd get up go to my work with my dad in the morning stay there all day do whatever he had to do and it was and then we lived where we could get off somehow we ended up riding the bus over there so we could get off the marina and that was pretty cool get off the marina and you were ready to go to work yep so, uh, drop you off at your job that's it there drop you go off work. <laughs> drop you work. off at work uh, that's it. Uh, 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 very good so uh so you went right from high school to to working in the family business yes. yeah yep yeah my dad used to joke when I was a senior in high school. He said, oh, what's Kirk Dane's for graduation present? He'd take his ring of keys off and he'd hand it to him. <laughs> there you go. So. so he was ready to retire when you were yes. coming out of high yeah. school. Things are, little, you know, things are different. And like I said, my parents had me a little bit older. Yeah. So he was kind of ready to kick back. And then we would work at the business. And then, like I said, my brothers left one by one. They didn't have a whole lot to do with it. Carl ran the package store for a good number of years. And then... Um, like I said, we would work there, but uh, I can remember uh, 
what do you call it, uh, working there and that was your thing where you you just did it. It was seven days a week. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah, you had absolutely. More time off, you had more yeah. time off in the winter, of course. Things were different then. I mean, because I can remember when I went to high school, um, two foods teachers, um, Mrs. O'Donohue and Scott, worked in high school. Because then they had two rooms together and you had like two food teachers at the same time. One came to me one day and said, we figured out your your deal when you graduate. What? You should go be a pastry chef on a cruise ship. <laughs> and I said, excuse me? <laughs> We've watched you work in class. And I was real big with my mother's mother. And my mother used to joke a lot about, I can't roll a pie crust to save my life. And look at that kid. He can just do it because my grandmother just stayed there with me until I got the hang of it. Yeah. And even in later in life, I could be sitting somewhere at someone's house, look over at my mother-in-law and go, they rolled the crust twice. She goes, yeah, because she was the same way, just like my grandmother. <laughs> oh, but anyway, um, I said, well, what are you talking about? Well, you know, we watched your techniques and things in, in school, and that, and then the cruise ship would bring the whole family heritage <laughs> into perspective, <laughs> and you'll be all set. So I was starting to do that. That was maybe a junior year in high school. And then I went to this boat show in Boston with my dad, and one of his buddies, we walked around the boat show, and he chewed me the whole show about how dad's going to give you the place, da -da -da, hmm. you'll have the winter off, you'll have this, and he painted this big dreams of Ganger about well, how great it was going to be. And I have no regrets. Yeah. I love what I do. You have yeah. to love it to yeah. do what you do. If you don't, you can't do it. You can't do it. Yeah. And... Um, it's just, so I'm really glad I did what I did, but it was just so funny. And now people ask me, oh, what'd you do all winter? And what do you mean? <laughs> just, people boats away till Christmas time. Yeah. yeah. There was a time that I could leave and I would take like three weeks off or extend a vacation as long as we could get to keep the kids out of school. And of course it was tough too, because my wife worked in school also. So in the kitchen, but, so you had to manage that at the same time, but then you'd be home and there'd be a little bit of slack time, but. Now it just seems to go between the weather changing and things like that. There's, you don't have really, it's, it's 12 months a year now. But you have retained a strong interest in culinary uh, throughout your life, right? Yes, uh, yes. And we'll come back to that oh, in, yeah. a, in a few moments. But uh, uh, so, so you've uh, been perfecting your skills uh, right well, along. There hasn't really been a whole lot of time to perfect uh, anything. Cause uh, like I said, you work there and you work. And then you worked at night. And then I can remember when my parents had the package store too. You'd work at the marina all day. <laughs> then you'd go work at the package store at night. And then I'd have buddies that would help me and things like that. And like I said, then you'd go over there and work from 5 or 6 to 10 at night. And that was six days a week at the time. Now it's seven. But yeah. And still even then, when I had younger kids and I was doing paperwork from the package store, then my brother took that over. That was a big relief. So, Is the changing winters... Uh, going to have any impact on your business, good, bad, or indifferent? You know, I mean, we, uh, I guess we had a week or two of ice this year, but no, nah, it's gotten so uh, not much. It's definitely different. Strange. It's different. Because you have no way of controlling it. Then you'll be there, like in the fall, and it'll get really cold-like, scare everybody, then it warms up again. But yeah, it's having, it's having an effect on it. I mean, you, it'll make it a little bit longer where sometimes people want to leave the boats in longer. But at the same time, you kind of have to watch them because if a person has a boat at the marina and they come use it, that's great. But nobody ever wants to take the boat out because that's like the end of it for the year. And it's like, well, we got to. Yeah. You know, they can't all stay in until the day before ice is up. Right. Yeah. You can't take 30 boats out in a day yeah. um, and prepperize, prepper, prepare them for winter and things like that so they don't freeze. So. But you don't know, and you have no way of knowing it, like I said, as far as how much snow you're going to get, things like that. Definitely a strange year for snow like this year, but we still got it. We can still get it now. Do you see them wanting to put them in earlier, too? Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I'm getting telephone calls now. I mean, now it's May whatever or March whatever two weeks ago, and it always seems to get a warm snap around St. Yeah. Patrick's yep, Day. Yep. Yeah. You try to pick something that reminds you of the time of year, and it gets everybody revved up 
than like, you know, <laughs> Hurry yesterday, up. yesterday and the day before. It was downright freezing on the lake. Yeah. Right. I mean, there's times you could wear long johns up till Memorial Day because the cold water and the wind blowing off the lake, it's just nasty. So, but yeah, they want to put them in and you're getting phone call. My doc's ring, my doc's ring. I went to the landfill the other day and the guy stopped me. Hey, my doc's in, you know. I said, for what? Oh, I just like to look out and see the dock. And I don't blame the guy. There's no harm in doing it. The lake, I highly doubt it's going to freeze again or anything substantial enough that it would hurt your dock. But it just seems very strange where there used to be ice on the lake till April. Yeah. Almost April 1st, first week of April, March 28th, things yeah. like that. People talk a lot about the quality of the water over there, and there's been a lot of different efforts. What's your what's your <coughs> view of you know? Uh, is it is there was kind of a low point right uh, right around probably when you were taking over the family business, right? Uh, and uh, what what you know? What's your view of, of how things are over there now? I think the water's good. I'm sure it has days like anything else, and I can remember a big panic years ago. Um, Alice Biardi from Smith's Beach lived over on the South Pond and there was all these we didn't have social media back then but no. there were all these things about and talk about you know the algae blooms and things like that yeah and she had she'd go out for a walk and she'd walk by the marina and then sometimes she'd walk by the marina she'd sit at the package store and have an ice cream with my wife and she'd say oh yeah people all wound up she goes the lake's turning she said and there was a younger guy there and said, what are you talking about? And he says, well, you know, the lake, it turns, like the water rotates and things. It's all part of nature and yeah. things like that. It's the way it does it. You know, it is nice now that they can test the stuff and tell people with certain allergies and things to stay out of there, which is good. But for the most part, like I said, I think it's good. And whenever people talked about the water when I was a kid, my dad would walk on the dock, take a clear glass, scoop it up and drink it. <laughs> well, then after he died of cancer and... 91 people remarked on, but they said they highly doubt it was connected, no. but still. 91. Uh, no. I, I'm sure had nothing to do with it. Nope. But, no. but uh, so was it your dad or your grandpa that was on the select board? Board my of selectmen back then? My father. father. So how 55. Many years? 55. <coughs> uh, he was the youngest selectman, I guess, at the time to ever be elected. And then he dealt with the flood and things like that. Well, like I said, a lot of people, you know, there are some old people around that talk about the great things he did. I'm sure he pissed off some people because he would just, he was, had a way of saying things and huh. this is what we're doing. And so is he select when you can be in a hard position sometimes. Quickly. So is he a one termer? I believe so. Okay. Yep. So did his, did it made his contribution and, and yep. moved on. But that must have been a very busy time with the aftermath of the flood. Apparently. Uh, what did he tell you about, you know, dealing with with the um you know aftermath of the flood north pond had been drained out uh, he told me about standing there and things like that and just said how he did whatever he could to help people and the people some people some people complained some people said he did the greatest things ever the Krauss has talked about who he was the guy apparently from what i understand berkshire avenue didn't connect it was you drove in from both ends oh, okay there was a spot in the middle where it, the Arnolds had access to the lake. Well, somehow they worked that out. And now apparently there's there's tubing that goes underground to go under Berkshire Avenue. That had to be part of the deal from what I understand because you'll see a tractor down there parked on the beach and it pumps the water up from the lake to irrigate the farms. So, and, and other people, like you know, people just raved about the great things he did. Apparently when he got elected during his acceptance speech, somebody handed him a brand new corn broom because that's what he was going to do. He was going to sweep out the town. And my brother used to rave about that. And I said, yeah, but politics evolve and keep going on and things like that. And I said, somebody that dad had a run in back in the 50s, some of their offspring could be in the town hall now and you're paying for it. You know, that stuff like that, it's, it has a trickle down effect. But like I said, for the most part, I think he did great things. Um, but what I understand, he was the chief of police and all that. I have pictures of that. When you were the first selectman, you were the chief of police oh, and all okay. at the same time. Okay. That's what I heard. But then other people talked about another you know, lady, Mrs. Heffernan on Miller Road or Gillette Avenue over there, mentioned something about when you come down the road, something wasn't safe. She said within a week, there was a guardrail up there to protect my house, things like that. She says there's just a lot of great things. 
Yeah. Does it sound much different than being on the select board now? Jim? No, same thing. Same right. thing. Yeah, you had fires uh, no. you had to put out. And yep. Yep. You're always half right or half wrong. Yep. <laughs> it's just the way it's gonna be. Yep. And uh, yeah. Well, some people like you and uh, yeah. some, some don't. Some don't. Yeah. Uh, right. Uh, but it's always taking care of that person, not like your dad would do. That was the, uh, yeah. that's I, the key, yeah. you know. I heard of conversations of there'd be somebody there, there'd be a disgruntled whoever was on the other side of the table. Yeah. Well, what are you going to do? You're going to sue the town? Go ahead, sue the town. He said, we never got sued. No. So. So you have a new new venture going on with the family business. Uh, uh, I know you're not open yet, but uh, you want to tell us a little bit about that? Across the street from the marina, there's a nice parcel of real estate, and the gentleman that owned it, the Gerards had bought it. I'm not positive the year. I knew the year, but I don't anymore. So a restaurant when you were a kid there? Oh, yeah, there's a restaurant when I was oh, there. So it's in remember. one of the pictures that yeah. you had. Um, Rumor has it that back in the 50s or before, when you had the original Saunders boat livery on the beach, they had a liquor license and sold beer and stuff yeah. like that. Well, a woman that was running it talked them into becoming the manager. That way she could do all the paperwork for it and they wouldn't have to do it. Okay, well that lasted a little while and then she picked up the license, moved it across the street. What are you doing? Well, this is my license. I'll do what I want with it. So she stole the license from him, I'm told, sure. and opened up this bar across the street. So it was envious. I'm sure there was a lot of tension there. <laughs> I heard all about it. And then <laughs> when she decided to sell it, my father had someone go in there and bought it to buy it. And when they sat down on the purchase and sale agreement, on the bottom of the big thing, it said right on the bottom, this cannot be resold to Charlie Saunders, right on the bottom of the <laughs> deed. I don't know how much truth there is to it. That's what I was told. Yeah. So we left it alone, and then uh, the Gerards bought it. And then I can remember some guy over there looking at it when I was probably out of school or close to, if not out of school. And he, I said, hey, can I help you, sir? And he's walking around looking at the whole place because it wasn't open, had to not be open that day. Yeah, they're going to sell that. They want like over 100 grand for that. And of course now people today are like, what are you talking about? So. Um, it stayed there. The Gerards had it. She gave it to her son. He ran it. He was a body guy that turned food and did some fabulous food over there. Had a very limited menu, but uh, he did it. But he did it, you know, as a living, but something he liked to do. Yeah. So he enjoyed it. So if you went in there and said something, well, you know, that whole thing about, you know, take it or leave it, he was definitely one of those kind of guys. And um, so then he decided to sell it. And, but he had promised my dad, if I ever sell it, I will offer this to your sons before I sell it. So he cornered me one day and asked if I wanted to buy it. Well, we had just signed a deal to buy Travel Town trailers up the street, which we needed the building and the real estate and stuff. So I was like, I, I, I'm tapped out. I can't do it. So he put it on the market, and he tried selling it. I guess he came close a couple times, but it didn't work out. So I think it was 2021, early in the year. It had gotten to the point where he was in there and it wasn't open one day, the driveway wasn't plowed, so I plowed the driveway so the daughter could get in there. And she said, will you just take this mess? <laughs> um, she said, will you just take this over? She said, I know my dad and wants you to have it, things like that. So we made a deal to buy it. And my wife said, all I want to see is the excavator out there picking up the building and putting it in the dumpster. <laughs> and I said, for what? All you need is the real estate. Right. You don't need anything else to do. <laughs> so then we went through and we started with it and we got it where we, we bought it. The sale went through. That took quite a while, but we got it through because of COVID. And um, we started working on it. And then uh, I gave it to my son and daughter-in-law, son-in-law and daughter for a wedding present. And they're going to open it up. It's going to be very much like the way it was. Nice. Just a little... Just a little Modern different, but not much. Not yeah. much. Yeah, they want to keep the original. And yeah, will you be over there making specials no. for them? No. Nope. Oh, you're you're nope. not kind of the pie, nope. the double roll? <laughs> no. Nope. None of that? No. Nope. 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 None of that. But they will be generation six in the family business. Yes. Yeah. Which I is, want to train the seventh generation to be there. So uh, I can see you're already working on Oh, yeah. They're uh, there. Or they're working on you. Uh, they're there. When I see them around the oh, marina. Yeah. But no. They're there. Uh, We've got them working. I have uh, three grandkids. One of them's too small, but the older two are definitely there. Uh, they nice. enjoy it. They love it. 
and uh, my 11 year old granddaughter so work out there with a buddy on the gas dock and they get more tips and stuff because they're so oh, polite. They're yeah. cute. They're yeah. so polite and they, they wait on people and stuff. And uh, you know, I mean, uh, you know, they're, they're way cuter than you, so oh, that's yeah. why they get the big tips. Oh, yeah, uh, you know, oh, yeah. uh, just the way it is. Uh, yeah. uh, Joe's going to experience that pretty quick here. We're getting there. Uh, yeah, 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 two and a half uh, and two. Uh, yep, they're coming right along. But, uh, but the six-year-old, he's already there. He's very good about showing pontoon boats and things like that. Really? Oh, yeah. He'll have a he'll have lady in the pontoon boat and be showing her everything. And Oh, yeah. He's something. That's awesome. He's in sales. He's in sales. He, he, he got the family gift. Oh, yeah. Uh, I can see you pulling up to the high school to get him out early, too. I can already see oh, yeah. that vision. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Well, my grandfather did it. Let me. Help. I'm gonna. I'm gonna do it. Yep. I gotta go. I gotta so go. So we're we're <laughs> the property you've been talking about was formerly operated as the Franklin House for yes. many years. Yeah. Uh, and uh, a, a lot of people in town know that. But uh, uh, so you'll be reopening, or your your daughter and son-in-law will be reopening that sometime. It's going to be the Franklin House because we're a big okay. heritage. We're a big heritage. Wonderful. Thing, so. oh, be. Wonderful. Yeah. So keep the keep, keep the, the name. name and keep people have asked I said nope we're leaving it just the way it is I asked permission when we're buying it what do you oh I think that'd be a great tribute to my dad and stuff my wonderful so. yeah wonderful so a, a Southwick landmark comes back um, um, you know uh, yes because like our business there's a lot of history there um the woman that had it before was Don Desmond's mother Anna. who added oh. the Edda Desmond which you know, that's a big strong Southwick name sure. and things like that so sure him and my father were buddies I guess so and Kite's father apparently yes. uh, oh, yeah. so they uh, I, I suspect everybody up and down Congamon Road were, were all uh, friends uh, there's probably some stories about them that oh, yeah. uh, I had a meeting one day there was a picture of them a group of them I don't know six or eight of them I believe it's at Prifty's garage and I ran into Senior Seagull, I mean, na do, 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 he's just naming them off. There's yeah. Bobby Saunders, there's Charlie Saunders, there's me, there's Aldo, there's this one, there's that one, there's Nucci, and he was just naming them off. Yeah. Art Davis, it's just wow. all yeah. old family names. Well, congratulations on uh, being the fifth generation to operate the business there and uh, re proud of. reopening soon. You should be proud of it. There aren't many family businesses in the United States that uh, go back that long. And, uh, and the new venture across the street should be uh, exciting. Uh, everybody in Southwick uh, seems to want another uh, uh, yes. dine out uh, yes. option. So uh, we are lacking some uh, of that in the area, which uh, is going to be good. And yeah. uh, so now we you can. year round? I believe so. Yeah, hopefully. So now we'll be able to, uh, you know, dock our boat, have go get the, no, go get the six pack. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I got the order wrong. Go have, go, yeah. go have dinner pack. and then get a six pack or a bottle of wine or whatever, yeah. uh, if they're still open. Uh, yeah. All, all under the Saunders family uh, uh, enterprise. So, yes. how cool is that? I've heard it. I've heard it all. I know there were, the Coast Guard came around and they had a thing about you know like the car, don't drink and drive, don't boat and drink and stuff. So they came and they put these signs out there. And this guy come in, he goes, boy, you're a real hypocrite. He goes, got a package store here. You know, you got the, <laughs> the gall to put up signs like that. And I said, I didn't put the signs up, and it's just to encourage people, enjoy yourself, but don't overdo it. Yeah. Like anything. So how many boats does your marina hold? We have a uh, we rent sixty eight slips. Sixty eight slips. So. And a waiting list, right? Oh yes, there's a waiting list. So. And the seating at the restaurant will be sixty eight people too, or? I don't know if it's quite sixty eight, but it's whatever. Whatever it was. I believe back it's the forty nine. Oh, okay. So you're not asking a trick question there to get them in no, trouble with no, the board no, of health. No, 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 of course not. I'm just no, teasing. No, no. Uh, no. I, uh, we always ate in the um, outdoor, indoor, was it the porch? Porch out right? the front. Yep. Yeah, that's pretty much where we always ate. Yeah. yeah. No, we love the place. Simple, no that's aggravation. What that's what I yep. told them. Nice and simple. People want to go in there, kids or whatever. People yeah. with their kids have a nice time. Yeah. Casual. It's nice. Exactly. It's yeah. just nice. You can look yeah. out across the lake. Yeah. The beautiful. Yeah, so Beautiful spot. Uh, you probably don't enjoy the scenery as much as you ought to, but uh, know. it's a beautiful spot. Uh, I see people sitting there, even this time of the year, just sitting oh, yeah. there on your little They'll go uh, buy overlook. a sandwich, yeah. sit out there, look out over the empty docks. The water is very nice. Yeah. The so widening of the road, did that affect you much? Nope. Um, I was fortunate. Uh, it did have a slight effect on the 
across the street from the lake. Yeah. Because they did, but we adjusted and managed to go through that. But yeah. I remember when they first started, um, Dick Reynolds, the highway consultant, said, there's not really going to be much of a change here. So it worked out well. Came around there. So on your side, do you own right to the line? Yes. I mean, yeah, you really do, right? Yep. Yeah. The boat side, because there's nothing past Oh, to there, the right. boat side. But yeah. on the other side, there's, yeah, there's the, houses the and former whatnot, yeah. Ovid's property in yep. there. Yeah. Uh, and people talk about things now. I can remember graduating from high school in 82. The guy that built it, Ovid, had passed away. His son was there running it. And I worked for him again, because my uncle still had the package store. Yeah. So I wasn't working at the package store. But you work the marina, and then you go down there and work at night, washing dishes, whatever you did to help the guy out. So he came to my father one day and said, hey, I'm going to sell it. Yep. He said, I'll give it to you for 60000 and I'll hold the paper. The whole place, just what you see today. Yeah. And he looked at him and goes, well, what am I going to do with that? <laughs> <laughs> True, though. True. I mean, you had no time. No, I had yeah. no more time. Yeah, you guys are working. So. Interesting. It's definitely different, but. And then uh, you would go and if people, there was one guy that, complained about my dad lived up the street from the marina so I go to I went to one specific hearing I don't remember what it was for but sure. we were before the board and he was over there complaining and then the lady next door comes over she stands up and she said alright I'm between him and him she says <laughs> I'm the real about her now she said people go all over this country and spend millions of dollars buying overpriced food to sit out on the deck and look at the water I have it in my backyard every day. I think you should let the kid do whatever he wants. That was the end of that. Done. Done. So, yeah. It's good. It's just a lot of hard work, but it's definitely rewarding. And give back to your community, do what you can. Yep. Yeah, you've stored the police and fire boats down there. Yes. Since. And I had a picture of the original police boat. Not the aluminum one, but the whaler when it was brand new, the one they just oh, retired, wow. but I lost it in my pictures over there, so I'm not going to waste your time with that. But yeah. When it was brand new, 1985. Wow. And now we keep the fire boat there. We do that for them. They yep, come you do. They do drills and things like that. It's yeah. nice. Please load their boat when they want. Help them load it. Did we could to help them. We donated a new engine, wasn't it, uh, or something? This year we put a brand new motor on the buoy boat that they use for maintaining the lake and the buoys right. and things because when they built that boat, Dick bought a beautiful Mercury, but back then the technology was carbureted, which is frustrating with the new fuels. So, oh, this, yeah. so a year ago when they were having trouble with the boat, and of course I had no patience because after all I've been through in the past few years with COVID and losing my wife and things like that, yeah. just put a new motor on the boat. What do you mean? Just put a new motor on the boat. So then the guy said to Dick, run it. Wow, he said, I don't know what Kurt did to the boat, but the thing runs great. <laughs> <laughs> so, and the original intent was we were going to take the old police motor, put it on the Yes, the boat. I remember all that, yeah. And I said, well, why don't we just do that, and then we'll do something. They can just give me the other motor. It'll be less work at the end of the day. Sure. So we did that, and that worked out well. So they're happy with that. And then Good. we gave them another pontoon boat that was from the Westfield Police that had a brand new motor on it. So they have another boat just for diving. Right. That's specific for diving. Platform boat. Plat yeah. The, yeah. Yep. It's got a new motor on it, and they're redoing that, help them out with stuff like that. They're finishing that up now. That's awesome. So. Well, we appreciate that. No problem. There's a Thank lot you. you do there. Do we can. Behind the scenes that exactly. no one, you know. Well, and that's, about, that's, the that's the wonderful the thing about way. local businesses yeah. is they do lots of stuff yeah. uh, behind the scenes. Yep. The the national and global businesses, uh, not Ugh. so much no. uh, because they got to get approval from wherever. Uh, yeah, and, true. And, uh, and well, I can remember when they did the road. and that, Like you mentioned, what happened when they redid the road. Yeah. Well, then once there was something wrong in the road and they drove in front of the marina, throw through the parking lot where there was water. Or oh, something. there was a water yeah. issue for a little while. Right. Yeah. So <laughs> when they got all done, the state stepped in and said, well, we've got to, you know, repave this here because we tore it all up. So they came in and they repaved it during, after they did the road. Well, some smart Alec was there one day and he made a comment of, well, this is really nice. You got a new parking lot out of it. Well, Baldiga, the rep, was staying there and he goes, 
after what this guy went through in the last four, three years yeah. dealing with the road, he said, you ruined the road, the, his driveway. Why wouldn't we repave it? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you're lucky you got through if it wasn't for you. You weren't going, that road would have been closed. Exactly. Yep. Dead end. Yep. Yeah. Find so, another way to get to Connecticut, huh? Exactly. exactly. Yeah. Back to the toll booth idea, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's not the first time I heard that. <laughs> it won't be the last. This has been a great discussion. It I'm going to turn it back to yeah, you, Joe, for closing it. comments. Yeah, no, nope. uh, thanks for coming aboard. And uh, I appreciate the offer. We'll Very see nice. you at the Franklin House. We'll do that. Okay. Thank you. Because you're going to make the first buy. There you All go. right, folks, that's it. <laughs> Double roll your crust, and you're good to go. Have a good day, folks.